Thanks for staying with us. Uh, nearly 100,000 refugees have been displaced due to ongoing heavy floods in South Sudan's Maban County. Main roads and vast areas have also been submerged in floodwaters, making access to those in need difficult. The floods have also impacted access to public services, including hospitals and damaged sanitation facilities, increasing health risk. People are seeking safety from the floodwaters wherever they find dry land, mostly on small island, as floodwaters have submerged vast areas and main roads. The UN Refugee Agency, humanitarian partners and the local authorities say they are trying to provide emergency support as people desperately need shelter, food, water and sanitation services. South Sudan is gradually recovering from six years of a brutal civil war. A story of a Tunisian young man who went missing at sea after his migrant boat capsized is a testament of growing frustration and anger, especially among young people in the country. The conditions have led to Tunisians overwhelmingly rejecting their political establishment in recent elections, voting in a fractured parliament and a complete outsider as president. <laughs> It only took 10 minutes for Fakar Hamidi to slip out of his house, past the cafes where unemployed men spend their days, and reach the creek through the mud flats, where a small boat would ferry him to the migrant ship heading from Tunisia to Italy. He left late at night, and the first his parents knew of it was a panicked crying phone call from an Italian mobile number. When he called as the boat was capsizing, he said, Dad, Pray for me and forgive me. The boat is sinking and we are dying. His friend then took away the phone and just ended the call. The 18-year-old is one of several people from his Tena district of the eastern city of Sfax, among the dozens still unaccounted for in this month's capsizing off the Italian island of Lampedusa as more Tunisians join the migrant trail to Europe. His loss and the continued desire amongst many young men in Thinner to make the same dangerous journey vividly demonstrates the economic frustration that also drove voters to reject Tunisia's political elite in recent elections. A survey by the Arab Barometer, a research network, said a third of all Tunisians and more than half of young people were considering emigrating up by 50% since the 2011 revolution. <laughs> How will the youth be happy with these conditions? The Neba Cafe sells all sorts of drugs that I don't even know about at this age. And there are no jobs too. The aid agency Mercy Corps said last year that a new surge of migration from Tunisia began in 2017, a time when the economy was dipping. Unemployment is higher amongst the young people than anyone else in Tunisia. But their support for a candidate touting a clear break from normal post-revolutionary politics only underscored their frustration at the direction Tunisia took under past leaders. At the time of Tunisia's 2011 revolution, they had great hope. Mukhtar Hamidi said at the time of Tunisia's 2011 revolution, they had great hope. But economically, things got worse and Fakar found little hope in politics. An improvement will come too late for the Hamidi family, still waiting nearly two weeks later for the confirmation that their only son has drowned. Let's head to Cote d'Ivoire now to meet a street artist living with disabilities in Abidjan. 40-year-old Adama Traore says painting hills and boosts his morale as he sells his work in the Ivorian capital. Let's take a look. Born without arms and legs, Adama Traore says his painting has helped him keep off the streets. He joined a center for disabled youths when he was nine years old. There, with the help of the head teacher, Marie Odile Bilberen, he learned how to paint. When I was a child, my mom sent me to this white lady named Marie Odile in a center for the disabled in Abobodisi, an Abidjan neighborhood. I learned to paint there, and I worked with gauche and markers. Well, thanks to her today. Traore says he faced difficult times in the streets of Abidjan, but he refused to give up on his dream to become an artist. 
He slowly saved up some money for his artwork and used it to open a small art studio. Taxi driver Dauda Kone drops him to and from work every day. Every day, I pick him and drop him off, and in the evening again, I take him back home. Honestly, money doesn't matter. It's all about courage. Traore says painting is therapeutic and helps to lift his spirits. Painting heals. Painting boosts morale. Painting cleans the spirit. Painting made me become Traore Adama. If I didn't paint, I don't know what I would do. His paintings cost about $84 and above. Really inspirational. Well, back here in Nigeria, the Cross River State Governor, Professor Ben Ayadi, has appealed to nations of the world to put an end to wars and crises and embrace peace. A governor who raised concerns over the killings and harsh treatment of humans across the world says that human actions have in recent times shown compromise, hence the need for the timelessness using humanity as this year's theme of the Kaaba Festival. He made the comments at the first of three carnival dry runs in the state capital. <laughs> Streets of Calabar, the Cross River State capital, filled with people wearing colorful costumes and dancing skills on display. Leading them is Governor Ben Ayadi alongside Bangladeshi and Belize ambassadors. <laughs> It's the flag off of the first carnival dry run, signaling the initial commencement for preparations of the main carnival slated for December. The state government holds three dry runs to get participants familiar with the carnival routes. In line with the theme of this year's event, which canvasses humanity, Governor Ben Ayadi raises concerns over the prevalence of violence in the country and globally. I have seen videos where young people put fire on a fellow human being and watch back and record with laughter. I have seen human beings try to cross the Mediterranean Sea and on the other side they are arrested and put in a dungeon. I have seen torture. I have, there is, the social media has created an opportunity for us to know the level of rot, the degeneracy of the humanity that is fast happening. So the carnival is to celebrate humanity and say, look, it's time for us to come back together as a people and bring value. Expressing appreciation for being a part of this year's activities, the Bangladeshi High Commissioner to Nigeria, Ambassador Shamir Hassan, and his counterpart from Belize, Ambassador Ifan Yichikui Fedi, also preach peace. At the end of the day, we are human beings. And humanity is something which should prevail among us, and it should act as a rallying factor. I am here for the first time and I, I, I believe I'm very hopeful that Bangladesh will be attending the carnival in December for the first time. Oh, we've we'll been here for the last, last three years. And the, as a matter of fact, more of the people, more of the people I represent want to be part of it. Uh, it changes their mind, changes their perceptions about the values of African condition. The Calabar Carnival is an annual cultural festival that displays African culture and heritage by means of music, costume, drama, and other cultural activities. And that's the program today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Teniola Shobo Ali. Bye for now.